We're back now at 820 with John Krasinski. He was about to throw in the towel as an actor, they say, until coming into the role of nice guy Jim Halpert on NBC's hit show, The Office. But John is not just acting in his new movie, Promised Land. He co-wrote the screenplay, and he's one of the producers. John, welcome back. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. So the, the story that I read about this, and you tell me if this is just one of those great little PR person yeah. stories, is that you're having dinner with your wife, Emily, and Matt Damon, because yeah. they were working on a movie together, and you brought up this project that you had in mind, and he instantly said, I'm in. He did. Well, what we were doing is we, uh, he said he wanted to direct, and he was like, I'm ready to direct. Do you have anything that you might want to you know, work on. And I said, yeah, actually this thing. And I just handed it to him. You happen to have it with you? I did. I had like a document that we were not at dinner the next morning. Right. We were writing right away. He loved the idea and it was something that he really wanted to direct later. He turned out scheduling wise, he well, couldn't direct. What it. was the process like for you? I mean, co-writing, this is a lot to do to take on producing and co-writing and acting. It turns out it is. I thought it was going to be fine. <laughs> it's terrifying. Um, no, we, uh, we went, he was actually shooting We Bought a Zoo out in California at the time. And so I just drove to his house every weekend. He wins by default with four girls. And so that's a very busy house that I have to go to him. Right. And, uh, and we actually wrote with children climbing all over him, and he was doing bath time and dinner and everything, and we still got it done. Give people a sense of the plot here. You play an environmentalist. He plays a guy who would love a town to agree to drilling in that town. Exactly. And, and so you come, you clash a bit. Exactly, yeah. He's playing a guy who works for uh, uh, an energy company that's trying to lease land so that these people can drill. Uh, for natural for natural gas, and I'm the environmentalist who doesn't think that that's necessarily a great idea. Not only do you go up against each other over the issue of drilling, you go up against each other over the issue of a girl. Always. All right. And now, just I mean, are you asking audiences to suspend their belief system? You are fighting for a girl with the former sexiest man in the world. Okay. See, now I thought you were going to say suspend their disbelief that I couldn't win. Exactly. Exactly. Oh boy, I got to not do this anymore. Um, no. Uh, yeah. I mean, when he, you know, going up against the sexiest man alive. Uh, I don't like the, the word alive. It just feels like <laughs> there were other sexy men, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a real challenge, but I rose to it. And Matt's going to be here a little later in the week. One, I, you know, I don't know whether it's just in the studio here. It seems like one of the absolute most normal down-to-earth actors in the business. It's just in the studio here. It is. <laughs> yeah, on the set. No, he's the <laughs> nicest guy in the world, to the point where uh, I don't understand how he leaves a restaurant or walks down the street, only because if anybody says hi to him, he'll basically just sit down and have a cup of coffee if you want to talk about it. I, I, I know that we should talk about the past a little bit. So when Matt Damon and Ben Affleck teamed up several years back and co-wrote a project, it ended up in a photo that looked something like this, okay? The Great. Academy Award, Goodwill no Hunting, pressure. pretty good. Now you brought us a picture this morning that I'm just asking you to explain. What is it you wanted us to get from this picture? Oh, God. Ben's going to love that. Yeah. <laughs> is that uh, the way you hope it's going to turn out in a couple yeah. of months? First that picture happens, and then I go direct Argo 2, yeah. <laughs> which I don't think is going to be as successful as the first one, but I'm going to give it a shot. You're in the process of uh, wrapping up The Office next yes. season. Yeah. Um, is it true what I said in the intro that, that you were going to call it quits in acting before that role came around? Yeah, absolutely. I, I got out of this theater school, and I, uh, I said to my mom when she picked me up, I said, I'm going to move to New York and be an actor. And she said the greatest thing. She said, you know what? Um, great, but if after two and a half, three years, if you don't have a little bit of a bite, like there's not a feeling that it's going to work out, you have to pull yourself out of it because as your mom, I can't ask you to give up on your dreams, which I thought was the greatest advice ever. And so sure enough, around September, I called her two and a half years later and just said, I, I don't think it's going to work out. And she said, just ride it out. Just finish the year. You've been doing great. And then I got the office. So I owe my mom 10%. But, but let everything. me ask you, for, for, the, for the young <laughs> actors who may be looking now, what kept you going during those two and a half years? It's so cliche, but honestly, I had the best time in the world doing the waitering thing, and I was, a, I was a casting director's assistant, so I read the other parts with any actor that came in. I just loved learning about anything I could with the business, and so that really is the fun stuff that I'd, you know, you'd go to a bar with your friends who are all doing it too, and you just talk about the struggle and barely paying rent, and there's something romantic about that only for about two and a half years. <laughs> have you thought about what might have been your life today had you not gotten that role on The Office? Yeah, I mean, to the point where it gets a little scary. It's a little bit of an existential crisis after a while, because I wouldn't have met my wife. I wouldn't have been out in L.A. I mean, all these things systematically. The, truly, when I say that the show's given me everything, it's given me everything. Well, and we've enjoyed watching you over these nine seasons and, and continued success. This movie is called Promised Land. It's great. And, by the way, Matt Damon will be here tomorrow, and the movie opens up December 28th.